12 News is your local election headquarters. Candidates are making their final push ahead of tomorrow's primary. The polls open at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Now, if you need help finding where you are supposed to vote tomorrow, we break it all down for you right now at WPRI.com. The Secretary of State says your polling place might have changed this year due to some redistricting, but nonetheless, it should be a painless process. 12 News reporter Sheena Loshuto breaks down everything you need to know, including a look at the key races we are tracking. Now, Sheena joins us live at the State House and the race for governor especially is one that we're watching very closely. Exactly. A lot of people want to be the next governor. It's a very crowded race, but will it really change Rhode Island's political landscape this year? That's something we'll find out more about tomorrow. The polls open at 7 a.m. Tuesday, September 13th marks the Rhode Island primary. The first step for voters is to find out where to go. It's based on where you live. Bring your photo ID, your government photo ID. But if you don't have it, if you get to the polling location, you can still ask for a provisional ballot and still vote. Secretary of State Nellie Gorbea says if you haven't sent in your mail-in ballot yet, you're encouraged to bring it in in person tomorrow. The deadline for that is 8 o'clock Tuesday night. That's the same time the polls close. Don't put it in the mailbox today and hope that it gets counted by tomorrow. Take it to your city or town hall to an official election mailbox or to the polls. Gorbea is among the group of Democrats challenging incumbent Governor Dan McKee. Matt Brown, Helena Folks, and Dr. Luis Daniel Munoz are also on the ballot. The winner of the Democratic primary will likely face gubernatorial Republican frontrunner Ashley Kalis in November. Several Rhode Island residents admitted to us off camera and on camera they don't plan on voting this year. Some telling us all they want to see is someone who's honest with the people, not just saying what they want to hear. All it seems the politicians are getting richer and the little people are getting poorer. While others say they're staying true to their party. I'm for the Democrats. Another high profile race. Who will succeed Congressman Jim Langevin? Here's a look at who's running for Congress to fill the seat for U.S. House District 2. The winner of that race will challenge Republican Alan Fung in the general election. Now another race we're watching very closely is the Providence mayoral one. For the first time since 2015, voters here will pick a new mayor. Reporting live in Providence, I'm Sheena Loshudo, 12 News. Sheena, thank you. You can count on 12 News for in-depth coverage of tomorrow's primary. We'll have updates when the polls close, followed by our election night special at 9 o'clock on WPRI 12. And of course, complete coverage on 12 News at 10 and 11 and always on WPRI.com. From the governor's race to a new Providence mayor to even a congressional seat, Rhode Islanders will be heading to the polls tomorrow to vote in the state's primary, and you'll need an ID to vote. But if you don't have one, the state says you can still ask for a provisional ballot. 12 News reporter Sheena Loshuto has a look at one of the key races and has more on what you need to know for tomorrow. Sheena? It's the day many have been waiting for. The polls open tomorrow at 7 o'clock in the morning, and a lot of these candidates spent the weekend campaigning, really hoping to gain your last-minute support. Who do Rhode Islanders want to see in office? They need a, uh, a politician that's for the people, not for themselves. Uh, they could clean up uh, the, the area, the areas of the state, and uh, try to make it more livable for people. Voters have the opportunity to weigh in Tuesday if they haven't already. The polls open at 7 a.m. and close at 8 o'clock at night. You can't just go to any polling location, though. You have to go to your assigned one based on your address. Go to vote.ri.gov and you can find it there or call 211. And it's a crowded gubernatorial race. Secretary of State Nellie Gorbea is among the group of Democrats challenging incumbent Governor Dan McKee. Matt Brown, Helena Folks, and Dr. Luis Daniel Munoz are also on the ballot. The winner of the Democratic primary will likely face Republican frontrunner Ashley Kalis in November. The ADA compliant express vote machines will in fact be at polling locations tomorrow. The Board of Elections confirmed that despite calls from Providence's mayor to pull them. The machines reported issues during early voting. For example, on some Spanish ballots, they showed the wrong names. Look, I want to make sure that every eligible voter can and does vote. That's why we partnered with Board of Elections to buy these new express vote machines. And, you know, yes, we had a few problems with Spanish language ballots, but those have been resolved. 
the board has done its due diligence, the, so has the um, equipment manufacturer, and we're all set to go for tomorrow. And if you still have a mail-in ballot with you at home, Gorbea says don't put it in the mail tonight. You need to physically bring it to either a polling location or one of those official ballot boxes. The deadline to do that is tomorrow at 8 o'clock at night. And that, of course, is also when the polling locations close too. Reporting live in Providence, I'm Sheena Loshudo, 12 News. You can count on 12 News for in-depth coverage of tomorrow's primary. Tracking all the races, we'll have updates when the polls close, followed by our election night special at 9 o'clock tomorrow night right here on WPRI 12. Then complete coverage on 12 News at 10 and 11 and on WPRI.com. And if you can't stay up late, we'll break down the results Wednesday morning on 12 News this morning with a look ahead to the November election.